If you want to make your edits look more premium, then this video is for you. I'm gonna be creating a free ad for Starbucks and you'll be able to see the whole process. So if you watch the tutorial, you will see small tweaks that make animations look so much better. And if you implement it into your own edits, you'll possibly attract more premium clients that want that type of quality in their videos. By the way, guys, I increased the prices for my editing assets. I thought that I'm charging way too little for the value I'm providing, but I didn't want to leave you hanging. I'm currently running summer sales, so actually the prices are lower than they used to be before. So visit the link in the description. And that being said, we're going to get straight into bumping up your skills. All right, so we're back in software. Let me just show you the comp settings, 1080 by 1920. And let me just change the duration. So here's the thing. If you don't know what to edit, you always hop on Pinterest and you look for inspiration. So that's exactly what I did. And I found that image. Let me just show you. It's actually a very poor quality, but this was the inspiration for today's video. So we're going to kind of recreate this, but also we're going to animate it. So here's a pro tip. Pinterest is the page. We're going to delete it and we need to have some assets. So I actually prepared two of them. We got cafe latte and then we got a logo. So we're going to start off by creating a solid. So I'm going to go to new, click solid, and we're going to pick white color. I'm going to hit OK and let's rename it to white BG. I'm going to drop it underneath everything. And actually for now, I'm going to delete this and we're just going to work with the logo. So our first scene is going to be very, very simple, clean and minimalistic. And later on, we're going to get into that spice. So what you want to do is head over to the type tool and I'm going to type in Starbucks. And actually, you know what, when it's like plain white and plain black, it doesn't really look that great. So what I like to do is just head over here to the fill and I'm going to change the color to kind of gray going towards the white. Yeah, it looks extremely minimalistic now. I'm going to hit OK. All right, so we're pretty much set with this. I feel like we can just delete that text on the bottom. So I'm going to grab the mask. We're just going to do it like that. I'm going to recenter and I'm going to pre-compose that layer. We can actually rename it to logo. And here what you want to do is just right click, go to new, no object. I'm going to call it scale. And what we want to do is select these two layers and we're going to parent them to the scale. Here I'm going to hit S. I'm going to click on the stopwatch. And what we want to do is just zoom in. So I'm going to create such a movement. I'm going to select both keyframes and hit F9. Right, so that's what we have. So in order to smooth it out, we need to head over to the graph editor. So make sure to select both keyframes, head over here and make sure to drag that yellow dot to the left in order to create a peak, just like so. And this is way smoother. So essentially creating good animations is all about the movement. So you always need to play around with the graphs because graphs are changing literally everything. All right, so the next thing we want to do is basically select everything and I'm going to pre-compose it. We're going to call it scene one. I'm going to hit enter and we're going to get into the spice. By the way, we need to trim it somewhere here where the movement finishes. So here we're going to create a new solid. So what I'm going to do is right click, go to new solid. And actually, you know what? I'm going to pick the color of the Starbucks over here. Let's call it green BG. I'm going to trim it right at this position. And we need to head over to the rounded rectangle tool. And we're just going to create a shape like that. All right, let's recenter. We can always support ourselves with the image from Pinterest. So what we need is basically the white color for this. So I'm just going to make sure the fill is set to white. Let's hit OK. All right, as I'm looking at this, I feel like we can actually uncheck constraint proportions and bump up Y. So it's a bit more extended and then we're good. I'm going to delete it for now. And actually, I feel like I went overboard. All right, that's perfect. Now we can trim the layer and also we're going to grab our next asset onto the timeline. All right, let's scale it down. And what I'm going to do is probably drop it somewhere here like it was in the original image. And then the thing that makes the biggest difference is actually adding drop shadow. So we're going to add it here to our frame. We can actually rename it. Let me just do it. And then what I'm going to do is decrease the distance and bump up the softness. So that way we're going to get that nice separation between the background and our frame. All right, so this is pretty good. But what I would like to do is actually have the shadow hit the bottom part. So it's not really up here. So what I'm going to do is go to the direction and I'm going to set it to 180. And we are also going to play around with the distance. I actually set it to zero, but we want to set it to 80. Right, pretty much perfect. So it's not really visible here. And we got it over here on the bottom. You can always decrease the opacity if it's too intense. And this is really nice and minimalistic. All right, next thing we need to add the price. So I'm going to hit Control T or just grab the type tool and I'm going to type in $9. All right, this is really nice. I'm going to probably go to fill and pick something darker. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to drag it lower. Let's type in cafe latte. I'm going to decrease the font size and let's put it right in the middle. We can play around with the values over here. This is really nice. I'm going to drag it probably more towards the left. You can always support yourself with the rulers. So I'm going to head over here and I'm going to drag it like that. All right. So with the help of arrow keys, I'm going to just adjust. 
Next thing I'm gonna do is actually duplicate the text. I'm gonna drag it lower over here and we can type in something like creamy milk. So here's the thing, whenever you're mixing the fonts, this is literally the best thing to do because it looks so minimalistic. Let me just show you. So here we got two texts that are the same font and the same size. But if we take the creamy milk and we head over here and we change it to semi bold and then we decrease the font size just like so and we put it maybe somewhere here it already looks so much better so here's what we had before and after we can also take these two drag them a bit lower and we should be good and the next thing i'm gonna do is head over to the project and i'm gonna grab something from motion essence I'm gonna head over to the icons and let me just take lock. I'm gonna drop it here and this is a pretty cool animation and I'm gonna have it right here. So essentially we kind of want to create a button with the text locking the price. So I'm just gonna go into it and let me just change the text to locking the price. And what I'm gonna do is change the scale just like so. Let's just see. All right. I'm gonna go back to our animation and in case if you didn't have motion essence you can always just create a button let me just show you i'm gonna grab the round rectangle tool and we're just gonna create something like that i'm gonna change the color to black let's hit okay and you can just keyframe size uncheck constraint proportions move it forward and change x to zero let me just solo it out so that way you got animation like that obviously you need to smooth it out so just hit f9 go to the graph editor and do the same thing here this is really nice, you can always extend it for a smoother movement and just add the text and you got a button. But for this I'm gonna stick with my animation and this is actually pretty cool. Let me just trim all the layers over here. Alright, so we already got a pretty cool animation, but obviously we need to animate the middle over here and also cafe latte. So I'm gonna start off with our cafe and I'm gonna probably add something from Motion Boost, which is VHD. Something for the transition that is good is Saddle Flake. Right, let's see. So we got that extra shake over here, which is pretty cool, especially when we add the transition tool to the whole thing. And in case if you wanna learn how to create these types of shakes, you can always check out the video in the corner. All right, as for the dollar over here, I'm gonna probably just add opacity keyframes. So I'm gonna hit Alt Shift T, move back, and we're gonna nicely fade it in by setting it to zero. So this is pretty cool. We can actually have it a bit later. I'm gonna easy the keyframes and I'm gonna extend it. Really nice. And as for the cafe latte, I'm gonna head over here, go to animate, and I'm gonna pick scale. Here we wanna set it to 0%, then we're gonna open up range selector 1, open up advanced, and what you wanna do is basically change the square to ramp up, bump up is low to 100%, and let's just head over to the offset, I'm gonna set it to minus 100%, keyframe, move forward and set it to 100%. So if we solo it out, that's what we're gonna have. A pretty cool animation all right so this is great but what i'm gonna do for the creamy milk is actually setting a position keyframe then moving back and i'm gonna drag it upward now i'm gonna select both hit f9 go to the graph editor and we want to do the same thing as before which is basically creating a peak on the left all right this is nice also we need to add opacity keyframes over here to nicely fade it in let's just offset it a bit all right, so that's what we got so far. And what I'm gonna do next is actually create a new no object. I'm gonna rename it to controller and I'm gonna select everything apart from the green background and the scene one. And I'm gonna parent it to our controller. We can trim it to this position. I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna hit Alt Shift P and then Alt Shift S. So basically we got position and scale keyframed and I'm gonna move to the beginning and we're gonna bump up scale and change Y position. And we also need the same movement over here. So I'm gonna easy ease and in graph editor, we're just gonna create a peak on the left. Okay, let's see. This is really nice. I'm gonna speed it up a bit. And also, like I said, adding drop shadow is one of the coolest things you could do. So for example, here, they added shadow right below cafe latte. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna delete image one. And let me just go to our object over here. I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna duplicate. So here on the bottom image, I'm gonna add drop shadow. And what you wanna do is select shadow only. So now I'm gonna change the direction to 180. So it goes to the bottom. I'm gonna bump up the distance just like so. We're gonna increase the softness by a lot, like 300. And here we kinda don't wanna have the shadow over here on the green. That's why I duplicated the image. So for this, I'm gonna head over to the modes and I'm gonna change the track mat in our cafe to our frame. 
So that way, as you can notice, the shadow is only over here. But also our frame disappeared, so we need to enable it again. And this is literally looking so nice. You can also always add drop shadow to your button, then decrease the distance, bump up the softness and play around with the opacity. Actually, the goal over here is to transform that logo into the logo over here. So here we need to make sure that that logo is a bit bigger. So I'm going to hit you and I'm going to increase the scale and also play around with position again. We probably need to set it a bit lower. We should be good. Yeah. I'm going to definitely go to our graph editor and here I'm just going to drag it a bit more towards the left. Also something you could do to make your animation so much smoother is adding wiggle just to add a little bit of shake to the image. So for this I'm going to head over to the controller, I'm going to hit P and I'm going to alt click the stopwatch for position and I'm going to type in wiggle and in brackets 1,12. Let's click away. And that way, as you can notice, we got that shake, which is pretty cool. We can actually extend the animation for the log over here. So I'm just going to drag the keyframes like that. Actually, for the price of five of these, you could have my best selling product, which is Motion Essence. But I'm just saying, just don't miss Summer Sale. Also, something I started recently using is BCC. So I'm just going to add a new adjustment layer and we're just going to turn it into four frames. And I'm going to type in BCC. Actually, I'm going to type in glitch, cross glitch obsolete. OK, so this is really cool and you can always play around with this. Let's just find a sweet spot. Okay, so that's what we got. Really cool. And maybe to add even more impact, we can always add something from Motion Boost. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to add Extend Screen to add Motion Tile. And also I'm going to type in VHD. And let's take maybe Saddle Breeze. We just make sure it's in the middle. Okay, so this is pretty cool. And what I would do next is just turning on the Motion Blur. Let's go here. We can add motion blur to this as well. And also to top it off, we can add one movement, which is basically animating scale for the frame. So what I'm going to do is hit Y on the keyboard. I'm going to grab the anchor point, put it to the left upper corner, then hit Alt Shift S, move backwards, and we're going to set it to zero right at this position. All right, so this is really nice. I'm going to probably squeeze it in, then select both, hit F9, go to the graph editor, and I'm just going to do the same thing as before. And that way it looks just way better. So here we got the final result. You can also check out editing shift in the description. It's summer sale. And without further ado, I'm going to wrap it up here and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.